heritage. It's everywhere and for everyone. Whether you can see it or not, hear it or not, feel it or not, heritage is all around us, waiting to be rediscovered. It's what makes us what we are today and learning about it helps us learn about ourselves, our local community and those around us. Local history is so important because it brings us together and helps us to care more about our local community. That's why we must make an effort to preserve it and make it as accessible as possible. However, some of it remains hidden and here up north, the industrial landscapes that forged these communities have disappeared and been lost to time. But not for much longer. Join me as we rediscover one of South Yorkshire's most important industrial assets and together we'll walk down what once was the Thorncliffe Elsica Tramway. We start our journey together in the Thorncliffe Business Park. This is where the tramway would have carried wagons full of resources such as coal and ironstone, as well as bringing manufactured goods from here to the canal basin at Elsica, as this was once the site of the Thorncliffe Ironworks. The track was laid by 1834, believed to be by the Fitzwilliam family, as it connected to a lot of the industrial sites on land they owned. The purpose of tramways was initially to link collieries and such with canal basins for the transport of coal. There were at least three tram roads in Barnsley in the 1700s and 1800s. This tramway, it seems, was initially built in early 1830s to connect the Milton Ironworks to the Elsica Canal, as well as connect Milton to nearby ironstone and coal pits, and finally to connect the Thorncliffe Works to the basin as well. Along the way, it was connected to many other local industrial areas so that goods and material could be passed from one to another. A branch of the Thorncliffe Elsica Tramway served the nearby Thorncliffe Colliery. The finished iron goods came from the Thorncliffe Ironworks in Chapeltown on the tramway, ready to be taken down the Elsica branch of the Dern and Dove Canal. Here in Tankersley, specifically Tankersley Golf Park, iron ore from the pits and coal from Parkergate Colliery were taken to Thorncliffe Ironworks to make the goods. The northeastern section was called Swallow Wood Mine and was connected to the tramway via the Tankersley Park Railway. This area of the tramway ran until as late as possibly 1879, until the closing of the nearby pits. Nearby, the ruins of Tankersley Old Hall are visible for those walking by, showing that this area not only has more than just industry, but also that the aristocracy had places visible everywhere as well. The tramway ran past the Old Hall, crossing over Black Lane. Portions of the tramway that were on flat parts were horse-drawn and Lidget Colliery had its own engine called Success to take coal to the next ironworks. The extension of the tram road was mainly down to the encouragement of the Earl Fitzwilliam owing to his desire to transport ironstone to the three ironworks that were on its route. There's still evidence of the brick supports for the tram road visible today. The tram road would have connected Tankersley Park with Lidget Colliery. Lidget closed in 1912 as the amount of coal was not as sufficient as nearby seams. It was from here that ironstone and coal from these areas would have been brought to the Milton Ironworks just down the road. By 1866, this portion of the tram road had become much more derelict and disused as canal usage fell thanks to the increased usage of the railways. However, since the introduction of the South Yorkshire Railway in 1855, a lot of the tram road was seeing reduced traffic anyway. This line was actually relayed with a standard gauge between 1880 and 1914 to connect with the South Yorkshire Railway's line at Elsica. 
The wagons on this part of the tramway would have included finished goods from Thorncliffe Works, but also ironstone and coal from the pits it had just passed through, as it was on its way to Milton Ironworks. On its way here, it passed Skyers Brickworks, which opened in the 1870s, was making pottery from 1911, and closed in 1919. A branch of the tram road went to the Milton Ironworks, but this is where the tram road turned east towards the Elsica Canal Basin. The main branch that turned east towards the canal basin at Elsica went down what is known today as the Inclined Plain. The Inclined Plain was a single carriage system, taking carts filled with manufactured goods from the ironworks and coal from the collieries to Elsica Canal Basin, then taking empty wagons back up to Milton. It's believed that there were 500 wagons taken up and down here per day, with work starting at 6am and ending at 4pm. These were engine powered wagons, with the stationary engine at the top near Milton called Old Ned Bobbins engine, named after the driver. This segment of the tram road was in use until 1885. At the top of the inclined plane, wagons were pushed back into place by the engine at the top so they could be attached to the steel rope that would take full wagons down the incline. At the bottom of the inclined plane, the wagons were detached from the rope in about groups of three and drawn by horse to Elsica Yard. Once the goods had been emptied, they were drawn back to the bottom of the incline and sent back up the tram road. This inclined plane saw a decline in traffic owing to how high maintenance this area was, given it required winding gear, a stationary engine and four ungated road crossings, three of which required a flagman. The tram road curved round for a final time to reach the basin. There was a branch that extended in the opposite direction towards Elsica Ironworks, which is where Forge Lane stands today. Whilst the Fitzwilliams owned a lot of the collieries along the way, and the land the tram road was on, branches came off and joined on the tram road from private pits, with tolls being charged to use it. Ultimately, the goal for all of these was to reach the basin, to bring their goods for transport down the canal. With the filling in of the canal basin in 1928, the tram road terminus was covered up and lost to time. Prior to the tram road, coal and other materials were transported by a horse and cart. Only around 50 years after its foundation, the tram road closed in the 1880s. Then, just over 100 years later, the last colliery in Elsica was closed as well. However, this is not the end of the tramway or Elsica's story. The tramway has parts of the route that can still be walked, and that is one of the most important parts of heritage, that it can still be used by the community today for a good cause. The Thorncliffe Elsica tramway was paramount to the industrialization of Elsica and the surrounding communities, as the ability to transport more goods and resources meant that more could be made, more could be moved and more could be sold off. It was so important to these local areas and helped make it what it is today. But Elsica is not just a village living in the past, oh no. Elsica has a thriving community now and like a lot of other post-industrial areas around here, has a new future, something to look forward to, something we can all share. But it has a legacy and a fascinating and very important past, not just to here, but to the whole country and the world. And that is a legacy that we must preserve and share with generations to come.